43,000 horsepower of raw, ripping racing machine. This is more than just a race car. Some call it a dream machine. Others call it a killer. We have no death wish here, but we don't plan on getting me killed. Today, Ed Shadle begins a very dangerous quest. A quest to go faster on land than any man in history. Over the last decade, Ed's put together a team of American and Canadian racing fanatics. I'm anxious. I just want to see this thing run. Their mission, turn a jet plane into a jet car and break the land speed record. A mind-numbing 763 miles per hour. The speed of sound. Tiny hangar in Spanaway, Washington. It's time to move a monster. This is the home of the North American Eagle and two guys with one very big dream. Every weekend for the last seven years, they've been here building the most advanced racing car in the world, obsessed by one goal. Take the North American Eagle supersonic and annihilate the world land speed record. Okay, let's go ahead and swing it a little bit. And if you see a dangerous situation, point it out. Ed Shadle is the driver of the North American Eagle, a fanatical land speed racer, retired IBM executive. Doing, uh, killing us, but uh, we could lose a finger real easy, guys. Keith Zangi is director of operations, a machine structure engineer who races dragsters for fun. This is no multi-million dollar operation. This is an obsession, one that's spread across the border to Canada, where the car's engine and wheels are being built. I got it here. I don't got it at the other end of the wire. Despite all the help, this is still a do-it-yourself challenge. Hit a brick wall, and the team has to figure it out for themselves. Today, it's the speed brakes. They won't open. Well, we haven't done any air in them yet. Uh, we worked on it until 1 o'clock this morning. And time is running short. Ed and Keith are almost out of money. To raise more, they have to prove to the world that the Eagle will work. That means a test run. In just two months, they hope the car will howl down a runway at over 300 miles per hour. For both men, the stakes are incredibly high. If the test run fails, their shot at the record will disappear. If there's one place that stokes the land speed fever that's gripped Ed and Keith, it's here. The legendary Bonneville Salt Flats in northern Utah. In the 60s, Bonneville was the place where American racers gave the land speed record a thrashing, breaking it nine times. But to everyone's horror, it was a Brit who blew the record away. In 1997, multimillionaire Richard Noble went supersonic. His thrust SSC was clocked at a stunning 763 miles per hour, just beyond the speed of sound. This is the record that Ed and Keith want to beat. But unlike Noble, they don't have millions to spend on the quest. Ed and Keith had to find another way. Ed and I were talking about what could we do? Building something but not having the money to, to engineer it ourselves. They came up with a radical idea. We both kind of thought at the same time of using an F-104 Starfighter. That's right, a jet fighter. It's shaped like a pencil. It has inlets that will take air in up to Mach 2.3. Now as crazy as that sounds to take an aircraft and take the wings off and put wheels on. I gotta, I gotta be truthful with you. That sounded kind of crazy to me. Crazy, but brilliant. Turn a jet plane into a jet car. The F-104 was an amazing choice. 
it was the first jet in the world to go Mach 2.3, 1,600 miles per hour. Because of its unbelievable speed, the United States Air Force used it as an attack aircraft. So Ed started looking for a jet. He hunted for four months without any luck. Then, in July of 1998, he got a tip-off. There was a surplus F-104 in a military junkyard in Belfast, Maine. Price tag, $31,000. That aircraft was about six months from going to an aluminum scrapyard and becoming a beer can. I mean, it was really in bad shape. There wasn't a section more than uh, three feet wide that didn't have a forklift hole or looked like someone taking an ax to it. And there was lots of graffiti on it. Facing such a total mess, Ed and Keith knew they needed help. But with most of their money gone, they couldn't afford to hire racing car specialists. So in 1998, they began recruiting a joint American-Canadian team of volunteers. But not just any volunteers. Okay, Sean, we're ready to test. Ed and Keith pulled together experts in everything from parachutes to jet plane engines. First to come on board was Canadian wheelman Steve Green. You can't afford to have these wheels explode. If you did, there's going to be a catastrophic accident. Everyone had the right stuff, but this challenge would demand a quantum leap, especially from the engine, fine-tuned by world expert Canadian Robin Sight. A small little piece that can be pulled in one of these bolts, it's catastrophic. To survive and blow the upcoming test run away, everyone here must turn in the performance of their lives. We certainly have the right stuff. You can tell right away those who had the vision and those who did not. Over three years, this team of visionaries replaced 40% of the skin panels and over 5,000 rivets. They stripped out the front suspension and created brand new steering and hydraulic systems. Then, midway through the overhaul, they discovered something extraordinary. America's most famous test pilot, Chuck Yeager, had flown their car. Under 15 layers of paint, Ed found the plane's serial number, 763, the number of Yeager's favorite test plane. The other thing that's kind of unique to think about this is the tail number is 763, and the world land speed record is 763. I figured that's got to be a good sign to start with. So something's going on there. Someone's looking out for us. So the serial number and the land speed record are both 763. So I knew we, we had the right car for the project. That ought to be good enough right there. There we go. That ought to After nearly seven years of hard labor, Chuck Yeager's old jet fighter is almost unrecognizable. The panels have been replaced, every component rebuilt. Even the speed brakes work. This is good stuff, because this solves a problem with our speed brakes. Now, they'll open instead of shutting. Despite the success, tension is running high there is still a huge amount of work to do before the car is ready for its first run. Most important, the jet engine. And the car's radical wheels have to be tested, but not here. Both are being built in Canada, but Ed and Keith are worried. The jet engine is 50 years old and extremely complex. If it doesn't run properly, the test run will be canned. For Ed Shadel and Keith Zangi, this isn't just a road trip. It's a journey into the unknown. To break the land speed record, both realize they must build the most technologically advanced car on the planet. 1,400 kilometers north of Spanaway, Washington, is the tiny British Columbia town of Fort St. John, home to the North American Eagle's massive engine. The J-79 is one of the most sophisticated jet engines ever built by the U.S. military. Short of a nuclear reactor, this engine produces more energy per square foot than any other.